Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. And today we're going to cover Rubber Hose Animation Part 3. So last week we did a run cycle for one of our little lock characters. I'm going to revisit that today. Just to show anyone who's new what we've been up to. And basically, just a quick review. So give me one moment. I'm sorting some things out. And then we will begin. So you can enjoy the background music until then. Okay, so we're just gonna, I'm just gonna show you guys what the large scale, let's see, and I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger just so you can see what we've been working with this whole time. So this is Locktone. For those of you who are new to the series, Locktone is a animated gif that we're working on so we have a race going on i'm just going to hit play so you guys can see what it does and what we have right now is the background sequence last week we worked on this running female right here the one that passes by this more elderly runner this week instead of working on the third runner we're going to be working on one of the cheerers because it's this is basically the same run cycle we'll just add a different personality and flavor to it this one is more leisurely this one's a little bit more laid back and he's a little bit more of your stereotypical runner so what we're gonna do this week is we're gonna work on jumping and animating this character right here to replace him. So slowly but surely we're going to add animations to each character in the scene. We're using After Effects as the animation tool, not Toon Boom or Moho, mostly because most people already have access to their Adobe Creative Suites. And also because I didn't really want to switch programs in the middle of it. In a follow-up project that we will be doing, we'll probably switch to Storyboard Pro. And that follow-up project is going to be the Loud House Storyboard. So after we get finished with this project, you will have that to look forward to. So we do that. Last week we added some faint animations. I, you can't really see them here. They're very subtle. We added a wiggle expression to the clouds. So if you look carefully back here, you can see that the clouds are moving. We added a wave distort to the reflection. So 
Right now it's sort of buffering. Once it renders out properly, that will be a smoother animation. And we added a small glow effect, blinking glow effect to the ambulance light. So this week we're just gonna add some more hair. We're going to correct this mistake that we made last week um, with the wiggle expression. I finally figured out what was wrong with it and it's not actually a problem with the After Effects program. It's a problem with how the Illustrator file is set up and so um, I'm going to take the wiggle expression off of this and then we can just ignore it for the time being. But that's basically what we're going to be doing today so I'm just letting you guys know. I may also end the stream earlier than intended. Unfortunately, I had a bit of an allergic reaction last night, so I'm not feeling my best. And so... And so we're really just going to, I'm sorry, I took a bit of a break there. We're really just going to focus on the jump cycle today. And I may have to give myself a bit of a break on anything else. So you see these red numbers right here. I'm just going to delete this. So I'm just going to delete it. And then lucky for me, I have a copy of all the layers. So I have a copy of the balloon layer in here that I can just drop in. And I'm not quite sure where it dropped the balloon. So just gonna see here and we'll figure it out so just delete that again and move on let's move into our shocked um our shocked pose i kept these limbs a little bit more curved i've already done the rigging for this um animation so I'm gonna do the testing of the rig on stream but I did the separation and breakdown of the art off stream so if you guys are wondering there is a lot more that went into prepping this figure than what appears to be so I did the rigging I adjusted the rotation points although I think I left the rotation points of the leg. Yeah. So I left the rotation points of the leg so I can do that on stream. Not sure if you guys are actually seeing that. But what I'm doing right now is Adjusting the rotation point of the legs. I adjusted the left leg. The right leg is already adjusted The right arm is already adjusted and I'm just going in and adjusting the shoe the rotation point of the shoe is at the heel and not the ankle just letting you guys know that that creates a More realistic Feel or a more realistic look and we kind of figured that out from yeah, we kind of figured that out from the trial and error and not necessarily anywhere else. So that's basically all the anchor points and rotation points. adjusted and just letting you know you use the pan behind anchor point tool the shortcut for that is y and the selection tool so we're here so now that we've had all of that adjusted 
Um, we're gonna arrange this into a more traditional T pose. This was a pose that I originally had the, the figure in, but for what we want to do, we want to start from a more base pose. This is kind of the pose that we want to go to. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put a frame, keyframe on this and I'm gonna use that as a storage for this pose so that I know this is what I'm coming back to. And the key, where we're gonna put the keyframes on this is basically on the arms. So I'm gonna, everything else, I'm gonna select everything. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm gonna select everything and make them all shy. So as you can see here, they're all shy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to unshy the legs. So both the left leg and the right leg, the right arm, where is it? There we go, right arm, left arm. And since everything is parented to move when the skin moves, the skin is the equivalent of the body in this case. Since everything is parented to the skin, we're also going to unshy that layer. And then we're going to make everything else in here. So we're going to click these and then we're going to hit P and Shift R. For those of you who are on a Mac, that's still Shift for you. I don't think that changes. I think it's only Control and all that changes for you guys. But if I'm wrong, let me know. So I'm just gonna hold, I'm just gonna put those there. And those are our storage keyframes. So I'm just gonna move them over. And now that I'm gonna move them, okay. yeah, we're just gonna, um. Just gonna move them over and remember that those are storage keyframes and then we're gonna move this into a more traditional T pose. So with the skin, we're gonna leave that for now. We're gonna move the arm. So the rotation of the arm is going to be there. Right arm, similar thing. Same thing with the leg. And the leg looks a bit weird now because the feet are actually in a rotated position. So we're here. And I'm just gonna move that leg whoops, over so that we're working with a more just so that we're working with a more traditional pose. Um, this is more of an A pose. I remember I said T pose earlier, so I'm just letting you guys know this is more of an A pose. Now I'm gonna adjust the shoes. I don't actually have the shoes layer here. And so I'm just gonna grab that layer, those two layers. So right shoe and left shoe. Gonna unshy those and go back. And I'm just gonna close that up. So now that I have the shoes, I'm going to control and we're gonna hit R, <coughs> excuse me, for the rotation. I'm just gonna rotate that so that it looks more flat. And the socks are a little bit off, that's because they've already been rotated, but we're gonna leave those for now. Go down into skin and adjust the position. And there is something else. So you'll notice when I adjust the position of the skin, for those of you who are unfamiliar with After Effects, the shadow is moving. 
And that's because the shadow is probably parented to the body. I was doing some movements earlier. And so I parented it there just to make sure that I didn't lose it by accident because I wasn't paying attention to it. So I just unparented the shadow from the skin. I'm going to lock that layer. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to use the shadow as my ground line. So we can just look into Yeah. We can just look into that later. All right. So There we go. Now that we are here, now we can start, where's my skin? Moving that down. And that's the ground layer. My shadow is actually higher up, so I'm just going to move that layer down. And it's locked, so let's just move that layer all the way down to right above the solid layer and lock it back again on shy and we're good to go. And since this is a hovering panel, so I'm just gonna move this up. So I just have a whole lot more space to work with and make this smaller. And just move that over here so you guys can just see what's going on. So that's basically where we are right now. I'm trying my best. So jumping is sort of a weird thing. We're gonna need the highest point, the lowest point, and uh, After Effects kind of moves with tweening. So I'm just going to explain it as we go along. And Rubber Hose animation has a lot of freedom that um, other animation doesn't have. For example, we're a lot more free to break the joints of this animation, which means we can get some really crazy in-betweens just to add some... Let me see if I can zoom into it and show you guys with the other one. This one right here, her nose gets really, really big. And it gives her the appearance of breathing really, really heavy. But if you were actually supposed to like stop it on a keyframe, where is that one? If you were to stop it on a keyframe, you'd see some really weird um, in-between keyframes. And Rubber Hose animation is very, very, very forgiving of that. So there we go. RP. And these are the keyframes that I saved before, so I'm just going to grab them, bring them closer. This is our highest point. And I'm actually going to copy the, those. And it didn't work. All it did was copy the layers, so I'm just going to go in individually. And what I'm doing is Control C, Control V. So I select the keyframe and I just do it quickly. And that's a hold in the animation. So the thing with jumping is that when you reach your highest point, for a second you've lost all your velocity. And this is a physics thing, so for a second you've lost all your velocity. And 
yeah. Shift R. Yep. So for that moment where you've lost all your velocity, ooh. And I made a mistake, so I'm just gonna go back and select those. So I don't have to worry about realignment and bring that down into here. And we're basically good for that. So the timing is off on this, just letting you guys know. There we go. We're not worried about facial expression right now. We're really just focusing on all the big movements. And then we will go down into details little by little. And that's kind of how I recommend doing all animation, especially if you're new to it, or it's, if it's a movement you're not really comfortable with, is to do all the bigger motions first and leave all the details for afterwards. Because if you start focusing on too much at once, your head is going to hurt you. You'll begin to feel like this is impossible. I can't do this. And so basically, I'm pretty sure every artist goes through this at once. You start to feel like you're overwhelmed or it's too big a project. So I actually had a conversation with a friend of mine more recently and we were speaking about breaking down larger projects into smaller, more manageable sizes. And I said to her that when you know you've reached a step that essentially, you know, you'll have known you've reached a step that is... Uh, a manageable one when you get the feeling that you can do this step easy probably in your sleep or maybe with just a little bit of research if you get that feeling then you've broken it down into a small enough step and so we're here and I'm gonna grab these Move them over. And at this point in time, we're going to do... I kind of want to do the bend. And in order to do the bend, I'm going to have to... How do I put this? Okay, what I want to do is I want to raise those arms, so the arms go from there to there, but thinking I want to do some changes to those arms, perhaps those legs, I want to do the bend, but that's going to require me to do some puppet tooling on the legs, so let's do that first. Grab the left leg, that is the left leg. It's the character's left and not my left, so if you're a bit confused by what I'm calling the left leg, that's all I'm going to let you guys know. When I refer to left and right, I'm referring to the character's left and right. And the reason I do this is because when I think about stories or animation, I tend to like to think from the character's point of view. It helps me to get more into the acting. So... I'll go, okay, my character looks left, looks right, and I'm talking about the character's left, the character's right, so that it's more of being in their world and not just thinking of a puppet. And so now that I have that done, whoops, I'm actually going to move that shoe up. I'm going to close the shoe for now, close the arm for now, and focus only on the legs. I'm actually going to 
on shy all of these guys i don't want to focus on any of them just the legs and the skin If any of you happen to know a shortcut, right? Just for this puppet tool. Feel free to let me know because I've been looking for one and I haven't found it yet. And I'm pretty sure it exists. So, In order to get ad adequate space to do this, Lock this. I don't actually ever need this layer. In order to get adequate space to do this, I usually undock my character panel and I just make my timeline insanely big. And I think it's... Yeah. So I know that's for effect, but what I want is a shortcut just for the deformation within there. So if you know of a way I can create one, just let me know. So we're working with all of that. And the pose we're going to create now is the lowest pose, which is going to be the anticipation of the jump. And anticipation in animation is the movement that comes before any big movement. So in ours, our character just goes like that. But in reality, in order to get the energy to jump, there needs to be some anticipation, some winding up to the movement. And in rubber hose animation and regular animation, this is the same. Um, rubber hose animation is more fluid, more circular, and so the anticipation is going to be more rope-like and not necessarily more sharp angles. So if you've ever grabbed one end of a rope and kind of just like shaken it up and down and you see like the wave traveling across from it, that's more of what rubber hose animation does. What I've done now is I've switched to my selection tool and I've moved out the joint connected to the knee. You'll notice this didn't follow, that's okay. Once I make the change, it will keep its relative position, but for right now, because it's not sure, technically the position of this leg hasn't changed, the sock and the shoe won't change. So we're gonna do that, that's right leg. Grab that. So this is a bit uneven. And what we want to do now is, whoops. Going to unbind these. Put them to none. So just so I can move the skin down. And that's the X axis, so we're looking for the Y axis. And what we're going to do is move that rotation there, like I said, just slightly. And it looks like this. And now it looks weird because the parenting has disappeared. So what I'm going to do is parent the skin to one of the legs and see if that works. Let's try it with the right leg. I'm just doing trial and error. It's nothing that I will say concrete. So that doesn't work. We're just going to go back to none for the skin and I will animate the positions of the legs. So we go there, select both legs, hit P and that's going to give me the position. 
So first we're going to go back here and hit positioning for this. This is here. I'm going to hit positioning for this as well. And then we'll move all the way over and adjust the positioning for that. V, copy V, as I held the position. So control and then Paste. Some reason this one isn't working. So and it's because I'm editing the wrong one. So now this should work. There we go. And now what we're looking at now is this. So now we've got a bent position and you notice that the knees are still bent. So right before the highest pose, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go to the legs, hit E to get just the puppet tool. And E is actually the shortcut for effects. But because it's the only effect on it, it's the shortcut for the puppet tool in this case. And from here, another good way to get this is to switch to the puppet tool and to click on the object that you want to animate. So let's say I do that. Now that I've clicked on the pin, you've seen all the pins show up. And had I been a little bit smarter, I'd have saved the original position so I wouldn't have had to go back in to do this. But you live and you learn. So select this one select this tool and it shows up and there we go and now what we have essentially in animation is this so you've got our anticipation and that's our jump And I'm just doing this slowly. I'm going to make this jump a lot quicker. And we're going to loop it over into a cycle. So this is where we're at right now. Hey, Tony. Um, <laughs> nope. I cannot. They've banned the shipping of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Something about a peanut contamination. <laughs> Tony, you write that right as I noticed you, though. You wrote that right as I noticed you. So I'm just transitioning these over. The thing is, I don't have many screens. So whenever I'm reading the comments, it usually means that I'm not looking at the screen that you guys are currently seeing. 
So what I do is I have a series of alarms that reminds me, you should probably go look at your comments now. So it's not that I'm ignoring you. It really, really is that I just can't see the comments. So I don't know you guys are there. So here, let me give you a hug, Tony. And so we're there and we've got this. So we've got the anticipation of the movement. We've got our highest point in the movement. We've got the hold, which is that, um, moment in any object's life where they jump up and this is right before gravity takes you again so we're here and we've done these three movements so we've done that and I feel like I should adjust the shoes right now, but I would be breaking my rule of I can probably make another character do the cha-cha slide. However, not this one. I'd have to study that. It would be Yeah, that would be, that would have to be a study that I do. I can't do that all the time. I can't do that off the top of my head. I'm not that good yet. But if you want to send a video reference of something doing the cha-cha slide for me so that I can figure out how to study that, then sure. Go right ahead. Feel free to do it. I will not stop you. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're actually, we've got about half of the jump right now. There is a movement that comes right before this and it's, um, it's, the legs have to be straight. So just for the sake of having everything get along. We're just gonna move this over. And I'm just gonna control shift both of these copy paste. Control C, control V, control C, control V. And I'm gonna remove this And now we're going to select all of this and bring this a lot closer. And what we get is, so we've got the bend and then the shoot off. All right, and so the bend is sort of there. I'm gonna put a hold on the bend just so that we can see it a little bit more clearly. So copy V, copy V, and copy V. And the movements are very jerky right now. Just letting you guys know that the movements are very jerky. I have not used any of these keyframes. And that's as a result of me just trying to conserve just a little bit of processing power. Usually I'll do deformations after. 
So it's there. And I think I want that bend to take just a little bit longer. So I'm going to move it down. And I want to see what the position of the skin is because something here is annoying me and I just figured out what it was. <laughs> okay, Mona, you should break the rules, live on the bad side. The soil is awesome. Join us. You will love it. Um... Tony is over here trying to tempt me to the the dark side. Um, you're going to send me a video of the booty snatchers invading, evading lock. Okay, invading lockdown, and then a little animation thing of it. That's going to have to be after our next project, but it sounds like it would be a fun expansion on this one. So go right ahead. You can send it to me in, let's see. Send it to me in the bonuses. So, um, so there's a section of the Discord that is bloopers and art resources. Monthly bonuses is closed for now because I'm still trying to revamp that section of the Discord. So send it to me in bloopers or art resources and just tag me in it. I kind of just want to put it in a channel that's not going to... Boom. Okay, so what I'm seeing here is that the body goes all the way down here. So it's at its lowest point here and here. So the body should actually be at a higher point here. So I'm just going to do that and it should look better now. So we've got here, so now we've got that bounce to it where it goes down. And I'm thinking I want the body to move up before the legs completely straighten. So this is where the puppet tool straightens out here. So I'm going to take this and just going to move it, just checking to see if it looks better and there. And maybe just a little bit slower. I want to see what's actually going down. So that's a bend. Okay, so the issue is that the legs are coming off the ground before the body is moving. So that's what's creating that weird, um, that weirdness for me. I'm going to grab these. And I'm just going to think for a bit to see what we should do here. 
the best way to fix this. <laughs> I'm okay where I am, Tony. I'm quite fine where I am, not on the dark side. <laughs> I visit you guys occasionally. It's just um other other times I just don't. Give me a second. One moment, please guys. And we have All right, so that's that. I'm kind of at a standstill right now as to how I want to proceed on this. I like the latter part of it, which is from here to here when it straightens out and the body does what it's supposed to do. Because right from here to here, it looks like the body is being pushed by the legs. Prior to that, this comes down and the legs start raising. So I'm just gonna grab the leg, right leg and the other leg, hit P. Is it R? So I'm gonna shift P, E and R. Just so I can get all of these here and see what's going on. Okay, so what I have here is, ah, so these are actually misaligned and that's what's throwing my, so what I'm doing is cutting and pasting. And I think I put a position hold here that I didn't put with the legs, so I'm gonna copy that. Copy that. And let's play it. Now it looks as if something else is behind. So we're just gonna sit and work this out and see. Thank you. 
All right. And that's that. Okay, so I'm a little bit stuck. Ha! Alright, so we're in a bit of a, maybe if I just control Z, so I'm going to go back to last working version of this, and I'm just going to, it says I can't redo, so we go see. So we're here. And I've got all of this just spread out so that I can see what's going on. So we're here. We go to the bend. We hold the bend and the shoes are already coming off the floor. At least I believe they are. Yes, they are. So between here and here, the shoes are coming off the floor. So we're trying, we're trying, we're trying. I'm trying to figure out what would be making the shoes come off the floor. Is it the position here? Because the shoes are still um, parented to their individual legs. And I don't believe that there should be, or it might be the rotation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring back the shoes. I'm going to unshy each shoe. Okay. That's right shoe and the left shoe. I'm gonna bring them back up to shy. And now I have these shoes. I'm going to bring up the position and the rotation. So that's P, shift R. And there's nothing there. So I know it's not the shoes. Let's take those off then. Since it's not the shoe, it means it has to be an issue with the legs. Because those are the only other items that we've edited that would cause an issue. So we're here, here, and we're here. Since it seems as if they're rotating, I'm going to put a hold on the rotation and the... Because the skin is holding this position. So if I create a hold here, copy V. Okay, so it's worked. This shoe is still on the ground. Copy V. There we go. 
So let's see how that plays. And that's much better. Now it looks as if the shoe is controlling. <laughs> okay, so Tony says, um, Mona, can I have some Cheetos or Doritos? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Can you? Um, just do the wiggle and you will get unstuck. I'm 70% sure. Um, don't worry. We're going to have a wiggle today, Tony. With the hair. And... Oh, hey, Fawn. <laughs> and Tony just told Fawn to go away. Okay. <laughs> Why don't you want him hair, Tony? Uh, hi, Fawn. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> if there's any buffering, guys, let me know. Because I can't, I won't know until my Streamlabs gives me a notification. But if you guys see any buffering or any unwanted hesitations on your side. So we go here. There. That right there. So we go here. And the shoes look weird. Go here. Over here. And that's the hold. So this is a hole. <laughs> Tony says he doesn't want fun hair because I gave him a heart. Would you like hearts too, Tony? You always ask me for hugs, so I give you hugs. But if you want hearts, I can give you hearts too. <laughs> Hold on. Okie dokie. I will give... I'll give you a heart just for you. Ah, okay, that didn't work out. Give me a second. I'm gonna get I'm gonna make a better heart. You are loved <laughs> what did you mean? <laughs> I'm not sure what you guys <laughs> are doing. <laughs> but um hold on. There we go. Hearts, just for Tony. They're your own your own personal heart, Tony. Alright, so we're here, we're back here, and we just solved our um flow problem with the knees by adding a hold between here these two keyframes. And if you ever have a situation where you put a hold in and your object still moves, we don't have that problem right now, but <laughs> now Fawn's upset. <laughs> Tony got two hearts. Um, yeah, if you ever have a issue with movement occurring when you put holes in, it's usually a problem with your keyframe interpolation. Right now mine is linear and so it won't work, but you can always switch between these and whichever one works best for you. Usually it's going to be Bezier or linear. Or hold, I don't know if hold might be a new one for me, so I'll have to do some research on what that one actually does. Maybe it just does hold, but I don't know, so I don't want to tell you that 
most definitely. If you're worrying worrying what's up with the shoes, um, yeah. If you're kind of concerned what's up with the shoes, we're not working on the shoes just yet. My method of working is to do the really big movements first, and then we get down into the details and all the fancy stuff like effects. Um, you'll notice in the main drawing right here, and I'm gonna switch to the hand tool, and you can get this tool, the hand tool, by just pressing H. But I learned it with a menu. I'm kind of aging myself right now, so it's my default thing. You'll notice this one is wiggly. We will get that wiggle using a effect. And so we're not just... Okay, so now you both, you guys both have hearts and hugs. You're equal. <laughs> um, Tony says, key phone preparation. Key phone? Oh, no, keyframe. So a keyframe are these little, these little diamonds that I keep creating to hold the positions of the character are called keyframes. They're usually um, movements, key movements that the program is moving towards. What you need to remember, particularly with computers, is that the computer will always take the shortest possible route. So if you don't tell a computer to bend or to curve, a computer will always create a straight line. So keyframes are basically movements that you're telling the computer, you must hit this position, you're going to this position. Okay, so what's here? This is a position. This is not straight. Straight again. This is a hold. And this leg is being held to here. Alright, so the reason why this continues moving afterwards, the leg is still in the same position. What we've done is we remove the deformation of the leg. So that's why even though you don't see any keyframes out here, it looks like the character's body is still animating because the position of the leg is the same. It's simply the deformation of the leg that's changing. So it looks as if our character is following through with the movement. I'm not sure if that's the best way to do that. So, um, I didn't actually know the definition of a keyframe. Nice. Um, if there's any term that I'm using, yeah. If there's any definition or term that I'm using that you guys don't understand, feel free to just ask me to Feel free to just ask me to explain it. Okay, so now that we have that, I still want the body, which is the skin, to continue downwards on this. And so this position might be here. So let's see how that looks. I'm just going to control Z that just to make sure 
<laughs> I'm not sure what's going on in the comment section. I'm going to leave you guys for a bit. So I'm still having a bit of trouble here. This animation doesn't look as smooth as I want it to look. And so I'm just going to keep working on this until it does. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't think that's going to work on my computer without crushing it, but I do appreciate the... I do appreciate the... Um... What was it? Where, or where is it? I do appreciate the suggestion. I don't think a steamroller to my computer is going to be the best for me right now. But hey, I'm always open to the suggestion. I think that would make a funny animation though if I made a little steamroller and ran, like, ran a computer over with it. So let's see. It's right in here. Right in this area. Okay, so it's too stiff. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ease these keyframes and see if it makes a difference. So that means that I'm going to have to open up all these puppet thingy my bombs and if it does make a difference I'm gonna leave it if it doesn't I'm going to undo it because processing power is so I'm just gonna do easy ease and we'll go in here so So I'm just gonna select all of these, bring them a bit closer, just a bit, and play that again. It did not fix it, it's still jerky. So let's go into here. Move that much closer. And move this closer. And we're just going to try and catch this. I wish I had a Keyblade, Tony. You don't even know. Like, I really wish I had a Keyblade. So let's see there. To bend. 
arms came up. If I take this keyframe out, what will happen? Let's see. Gonna take two keyframes out. Doesn't look much better there, so let's see. So it seems as if the body is coming up after the legs. Like way after the legs. So. Let's try and move. Okay, so first things first. This should be coming down. So what I'm seeing in this position right here is that the knees are bent and the knees are bent and if you look carefully at these two numbers, you'll see that there's no change. What that means is that the body is in the exact same position as it was before. And so what I'm going to do is move it down more. And we're going to see if that... So now it's looking a little bit better. So we're going to go back to here. Copy, paste in that cell as well. And play it again. And now it's looking just a little bit smoother. I'm going to go back to the keyframe assistant and go to easy ease for that. Okay, Tony says, Mona, I wish I had a Keyblade, but I just have a bunch of swords. Never even tried to actually look for a Keyblade, but I think I'm going to look just for you. Aw, thanks, Tony. Um, there actually, someone actually made a Keyblade. I remember, what was it? I remember watching another video channel on YouTube. I can't remember what it is. I'll probably look it up in the Discord. I'll probably look it up and place it in the Discord. So. But there is someone who goes around making weapons from video games. I think his um, channel is really, really cool. Because it takes a lot of ingenuity to create things that don't actually exist. So I really do respect him for that. Once I figure out his name, I'll let you know. And if you want a Keyblade, um, definitely there. Alright, so again, just specifying with Rubber Hose animation that we have a lot of freedom in the movements in terms of not having to worry about ultra realistic movement but physics and mathematics still apply here we still have the anticipation which is a preparation of the movement the highest point of the jump which is going to be that split second where no forces are acting on the body which is this hole right here. And in real life, if you throw a ball up, that moment where it sort of hovers in the air, that's the moment that we're replicating with this set of keyframes right here. 
Um, yes, Tony, he is a blacksmith. And I think... I didn't know you could order weapons from him, so that's new. Now I kind of think I want to ask him to make one of them for me. Yeah, I... Fun, I do think those types of channels are really incredible. Bringing there's another one that makes all the different food from anime and animated movies. I discovered it when I was trying to figure out how to make some of the dishes I saw in Spirited Away and Shokugeki no Soma because I love food. Okay, so we've managed to fix the first part of the jerkiness of the movement. And I believe, if I'm correct, that the reason the rest of it is looking so weird is because the legs are not timed correctly. So I'm going to work on that part right now. And the reason why I came to that conclusion is if I scroll through it, when it begins to get off the floor, and I did a little jump myself. So if you heard like a strange sound earlier, that sounded like something hit the floor particularly hard, that was me trying not to let you guys hear me jumping. And uh, I realized that the legs come the legs straighten out a whole lot sooner than I thought they did. So in my puppet animation right here, I have this bend and then the skin. I'm not quite sure what this is. Do I need this keyframe? Let's check. Yes, I do. So I'm going to move this. Uh, perhaps here. I'm going to do the same thing for this one. I'm going to move it here. And check how... Whoops. I accidentally increased the sizing of that. Check how that looks. And this is the position. Let's see what this is doing. This is here. So I have a hold right here. And it's a position of the legs. So we're going to see what's up with that. Because what I did was I moved the puppet tool, I moved this one in. So I'm checking to see if I move this. Let's see. There we go. So we've gotten a lot closer to the solution. The problem that we were having with the jerkiness of the movement was that I had not performed the movement. And so I failed to observe that the legs straighten out of lot more quickly than I had anticipated. It's still a little bit jerky, but now that we've done that, we can try. So let's see. And that's just half of the movement. And animation tends to be a lot of this repetitive, particularly computer animation, making sure that you have the positions right. And especially if you're using tweening like I am, it can become 
a little bit tedious if you're not 100% dedicated to making sure that you get it right. So we're here, we still got just a little bit of a hiccup somewhere in, I'm not sure what I just did, I'm gonna check. So I redid that time change and ah, that's what I did. So the work area, I accidentally found the shortcut for the work area. Um, so I'm just gonna pull that out just a little bit more, give myself some time on that and The body is still a bit weird. And I'm gonna delete this keyframe and check to see what's going on there. And that looks to be a smoother jump than what I had before. So there we go. And it looks a bit weird around the shoe because I haven't animated the shoes yet, but this is the large movement of that. So if you guys see anything that is how do I put it? out of sorts or a little bit, it's throwing your eyes off, let me know. I've been staring at it for a long time. Usually what I do off stream while you guys aren't looking is that because I've taken some time away from the program, I come back and I look at it with some fresh eyes to see if there's anything that I missed simply because I've been staring at the same animation for too long. And what we have here is this. So now we, we have half of our jump completed we've got half of our jump completed now we're gonna go there we go that's half of our jump we're not gonna touch the hands the hands are kind of a after motion they're not correct right now even though they look to be So let's see. Um, all right, so we're at the highest point right now. And All right, so having done my little jumping motion again, now we need to essentially hit the floor. So now let's see how we're gonna work this out. We're at our highest point. Our next point is going to be I'm going to leave the body for now and just focus on the legs. So our next position is going to be where the legs hit the floor. And based on what I just did, I am going to need to begin to animate the shoes just now because our very next keyframe position is going to be where, or rather our very next key position is going to be where the feet barely touches the ground. 
it's the moment right before we put any weight on our feet whatsoever. So I'm going to close the skin, take the legs all the way up, unshy the layers, and we're just going to go down here and grab our arms. And again, I say that this drawing has already been rigged for After Effects. I did that off stream. And what rigging means is that over here in this panel where you see right here, it says parent and link. I have gone through and each of these parts of this character is on a different layer. And I've gone through and connected them and changed the anchor points. The anchor points are little rotational points. So if I click on close, I'm not sure if it will show it here. Let me go here, click this. And I think you guys should be able to see it now. Yes, there you can. So what I've done is I've switched from the full composition. This is the shape of the clothes. And what I've done is I've gone through and edited the anchor points of each. And that determines where each of these is going to rotate from. So I'm going to go into the rotation just to give you guys a quick example. And it's not rotating here. If I do this, you'll see it. I changed, whoops, and there he is naked as the day he was born. So it determines where the clothes or where the item is going to rotate from. I have the rotation point of this particular object right at the center. In a real human being, this rotation point is usually where your belly button is because that's where you bend from and that's what you're that's where I was trying to create the So if my character were to actually bend, it would be bending from here, not here, but here, because that's where, theoretically, its belly button is. So Tony says, there are two types of people in this world. One that's as awesome as me, two people who are not as awesome as Quantum. Okay. I think that's a compliment for both you and Fawn. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm missing something. But I'm just going to say you two are complimenting each other. And if that's not true, then I'm living in a dream world. And I'll continue to live in that dream world because it's fun. And so... Just gonna click out of layered clothes. And I'm going to switch back so that you guys can see. Okay, I'm going to the starting soon scene. There we go. And we're back. Sometimes After Effects likes to give little display issues. And so for those of you who've been following me a long time, you're not new to this, but for those of you that are new, I'm just giving you a warning. After Effects and Streamlabs don't like each other. But we're back. Oh. And so 
we close that we're gonna go back to our shire layers and you'll notice that now that i've clicked those i now have access to the two arms which wasn't what i said i was gonna get i said i was gonna get the shoes so i'm gonna grab the shoes and the socks for both and you just want to make sure that we have the right shoe and left shoe we click hide all layers for which shy the shy switch is set and now i have those fully customizable layers so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring up the i'm going to take the arms off since i'm not using them right now and if you hear explosions in the background that's because I believe fireworks are going on. I'm not quite sure, but that's my theory because I haven't turned around to look. The closer it gets to the 4th of July, I am told that fireworks, fireworks, not fireworks, go off like crazy. So I'll try to make sure that's not causing as much issues. So we're here and uh, Let's see, we want here, here. And I'm gonna begin fixing that sock now. I think that's the right one. Nope, it's the right sock. So we're gonna hit R. And I rotated it, no luck. So I'm gonna go to P, do that. Shift R to get access to both. And I just fixed the right sock. Um, I have a question for you guys. Have any of you ever participated in marathons? We're gonna do that. And... I'm going to move the right sock up. Shift R and P for this. And even though I haven't made any adjustments to this sock, I am just using it to store the position just in case I need to come back to this position for any unspecified reason. So now i'm gonna go into the legs i'm gonna hit e and i'm only gonna do this with one because both of these happen at the same time and uh, i'm gonna hit position here as well And perhaps I need the shoe for this. So let's go all the way back. Grab the position and rotation for the shoes as well. So that's R, Shift, Hold, P. And I'm just gonna, again, store these positions. Switch over here, which is the highest right there. And I'm just going to rotate the sock. So leave that alone first. Let us rotate the shoe. And the sock is parented to the leg. So I think I'm going to parent each sock to their respective. So right sock, I'm going to parent to right shoe, right left sock, I'm going to parent to left shoe. And let's try this again now. So where's the shoe? There we go. And the left shoe. That's a rotation. Uh, 
All right, there. And... I'm not quite sure what's going on in the comments. Is that an insult or is it a compliment? I'm not sure. <laughs> it's like, if it's not a compliment, Tony, why are you so mean to Fawn? It's, it's an actual question. What did Fawn ever do to you? And we're just gonna pin the shoes down. Um, and then we're gonna move over. So in this area right here, we're gonna rotate these shoes back. And for skin, okay. So I'm gonna take the time now to read properly, properly through the comments and see what's going on, and. I'm just going to leave this on play and let's see what's going on in the comments. Okay. Yeah, that's a... Okay, so having read through the comments now, seriously, that's not a nice thing to say. What's going on, Tony? Why are you bullying Fawn today? Fawn has been nothing but nice to you, so what's going on? Did something happen? Okay, we're gonna go here, close the leg, close the leg, close the skin. Yeah, but it's not awesome to insult people for no reason. Like, you wouldn't like it if somebody went around insulting you for no reason. Let's see. Here. And I'm going to put some puppet tools on these shoes right now. Tony put... Um, okay, so with the little female emojis or the little um, people emojis, I'm not quite sure if what I'm seeing is what you guys sent because I don't have an iPhone. So if you have an iPhone, 
what you guys send might not be what I'm seeing. So what I'm seeing is a little not okay girl. <laughs> and Raven is sipping tea. Oh, hi Raven. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Let's see. Okay. Okay. All right. So Rave says she that's the same thing that she's seeing. So is it that you're saying that it's not okay? I'm not quite sure. What are you trying to say to me, Tony? Tell me. Speak words to me. It's like... All right, so I'm gonna try this with the puppet tool. I don't know if it's gonna succeed. So we're gonna put that there, put that down, move that bad boy up. There we go. One, two, three. And I lift the heel up slightly. Go back to the left shoe. Click. And uh, there's a whole thing going on here. All right, so I'm actually just going to remove all of these deformations. And the reason I'm removing the deformation is I forgot to lock the starting positions. So I'm just going to do that again. Lock the starting positions. So I put one at the heel, at the instep, and at the toe of the shoe and then I'm gonna go into each of these and where or oh, where are you there we go And I think I can safely get rid of the skin layer right now. I don't think I'll be editing that for the foreseeable future or my foreseeable future. And uh, just gonna move these. And I'm going to move this all the way back, grab these, cut, and paste them all the way back here. Copy V, whoops, control Z, and paste them here. And then I'm going to move this forward, and I'm missing a few keyframes, I'm missing these keyframes. So control C and there. I'm not sure what happened with the last one, but we'll see. Drop that keyframe there, just to lock that into position. And uh, click that 
And we're going to edit these keyframes now. Lift the heel. Same thing with the other one. We're going to grab that one. Grab the pins. Whoa. And the formers are really good tools for this. So what we're basically trying to do is to have anywhere that would exert a force or bend on the shoe is where we would put a deformer. So for, how do I put it? In, like the formers aren't bones kind of remember that you're not necessarily putting them where all the bones are you're putting them where force would be acting on the object so in a real in a real atomic let's say atomically if we were to put this correctly we would have put that at the junction right here where the ankle is but because these are two different things, what we're trying to do is to replicate the effects of what happens when the ankle bends. So when the ankle bends, we put all our weight down into the ball of our foot, which is why this specific area right here becomes very flat. But as a result of doing that, all the weight comes off of our heel, which is why our heel goes up. So that's why we have these three um, puppet pins right here. To lock down these areas and if i'm getting anything wrong feel free to correct me because i'm still in the learning process but that's where i am right now that's why i have them there if you disagree with me feel free to tell me so we've got our hole our shoe does strange funny things there and then at here, we're going to pull that down, pull that down, pull that down. And I'm actually going to do some adjustment on the position of this. So we're going to move, whoops, wrong one. Just gonna move that there. I'm gonna take the sock, which is the right sock, and adjust the position of that to there. Rotate it just a little bit that way. And let's see. So something happened here, and this is a hole. So I'm, all I'm going to do is put the hole on this position. So that's copy and V, and we fix that. And then we move to the next one. And that is my character's left. So I believe that's the left shoe that I'm now going to be editing and I guessed right, so yeah. So now we're just gonna point that down. And for here we're gonna go to position, move that back left shoe therefore the left sock just gonna move that there rotate it there move it again and uh, our left shoe let's see can we get that just a little bit control z 
I want to move that sock down. There we go. Consequently, that of course means that I'm going to need to put the hold on this one right here. So we're just going to copy and place that. And we're going to adjust that position. So rise that up, rise it back. So left shoe, we're going to do the same thing. So let's adjust the shoe first since they're parented to each other. And we're going to copy V that. And there we go. Let's see how that looks. And we're going to go up to fit 100% and hit play. And that's looking a little bit more natural. The jump is a little off kilter, but I'm leaving that. In animation, you tend to want to avoid twinning. And twinning is different from tweening. Twinning is when you have the left side of an object and the right side of an object doing the exact same movement. It looks artificial in animation because in the real world, nobody's feet, hands, eyes ever do the exact same movement. And so having little off-kilter movements like this actually helps lend more realism to your animation. So we've got about an hour and five minutes left. I don't think I'm going to be able to complete all the expressions on this. So I'm going to close this down for now and we're going to move on to, well, first we're going to edit. Wait, what? Not sure what's going on. Okay. So we've done that. And now I'm going to edit the arms. I'm going to attach the arms back in. And we're going to go back to shy. So looking at the left arm. And I'm not quite sure what just happened. I have lost the... So I'm going to close that down. I'm going to go down to project controls and reopen it. So if you're seeing a blank screen right now, it's not just you. I'm also seeing a blank screen here. It appears I lost it just a little bit, so. Not quite sure where it went or where it's gone. So give me one moment while I fix that. I'm going to switch to a better looking screen for you all to look at. It's going to be our transmission. I 
and uh, here. So let's look a little bit at our intermission. So we'll have a bit of an intermission while I attempt to regain that image. All right, so I just got it back, so we're back again. So I'm gonna transition back into that. Not quite sure how I lost it, but I got it back. And so we're here. So according to this, I have a puppet I have a puppet on this arm. So I'm going to delete that puppet effect because I don't think it's needed. And I think I might have accidentally put it there when I was editing, but we're good. So what we have now is our position and our rotation. And I believe this is a whole. Yes, this is a hold for the actual hold. I'm going to move this hold a little bit down afterwards. It's going to look... a little bit better, so let's move it down. And right now the arms are twinning, meaning that they're doing the exact same movement at the exact same time. I'm going to change that. Um, where is the skin? I believe the skin is the one that I want for this. So we're going to go to position, rotation. And the reason you can't really see what the arms are doing right now is because the body's position stops. But as I edit the other half of the, sorry, as I animate the other half of the jump, what you're going to find happening is that the arms will be just a few frames after the body. And that's because it's a... I'm not, I can't remember the exact term for it, but I think it's a follow-up motion or overlapping motion. Meaning that it happens at the same time, but not quite. So we're here. And that's what our whole animation is looking like right now. It's a little bit more lively, a little bit more bouncy. And let's see. I don't think it's a particularly interesting animation. It's kind of like animation 101. But for now, we'll see. So We've got that. Next, what we want to look at is to remove the twinning motion. Oh, and the reason why my little guy disappeared is simply because it came off the timeline by accident. 
So by moving it back into the work area, I was able to regain... I was able to regain the image. Okay. Mm so this is a twinning motion. I don't like the fact that it's a twinning motion. So I'm just going to offset it just a little bit on each. So that one arm comes a beat behind the other. Just a few frames. Maybe about two. And I'm thinking maybe I don't want the other arm to be... Is that the right arm? Yes. I'm thinking I want the my character's left arm, which is this one from my character's point of view. Exotic Butters. Hi, Exotic Butters. Um... I'm sorry, your your username just has me blown away. It also makes me hungry. Alright, so let's see. We've got those. I'm going to make these eased. Keyframe assistant, easy ease. And... I said that I wanted my character's left arm to be higher, so I'm just going to go here and oh, this is the original position, so I'm going to go here and bring that arm down and then I'm going to move to the next one, copy V, um, Okay, give me a second. I can see that there are new comments. Just give me one moment and I'll read them because it's going to break my um, concentration. So copy, paste. All right, so while this is playing, I'm going to read. Rave, oh, just to tell you, I haven't had any food in three days. Um, why? <laughs> Is there no food? Do we need to send a care package? This is a serious question. Are you okay? Um, you might not know me, but I'm Fire Sands from Discord. So I can't say that I do know you. I've seen, seen you around, but I don't know you in the sense that I talk to you as much as I talk to some of the other people here. But thank you for coming to support me. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you. Um, you said, nah, I'm okay. You sure? Why haven't you had food in three days? It's a challenge. Um, are you at least drinking water? I love food too much to give it up for a challenge, but I'm going to respect the fact that you... Okay, so you've been drinking water. So what challenge is it? What challenge are you doing? Okay, so we have this. Um... Okay, so I think I have just enough time. I can choose to do the other half of the jump. Or I can choose to get a move on the expressions. Um, five days without food for, I guess, $200. I mean, that's a good deal. 
Is the person who's giving you $300 ensuring that you don't eat food? Sorry, $200. I think you should ask for an extra $100. Giving up food is kind of like personal torture from my point of view. You should ask for more money. If they have you giving up food, just think of, think of all the things that you're giving up. You're giving up ice cream, pastries. I'm not helping you complete this challenge. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just realized I'm, I'm doing exactly the thing that I would not want to hear if I were doing that kind of challenge. So I apologize. I barely eat, so when your challenge is finished, go make yourself some Caribbean friends. They will rewrite your whole viewpoint on food. Okay. We will we will imbue a love of food into you. But I hope you complete your challenge. This is a piece of butters. Okay. I'm not quite... This is a piece of butters. Um, what does it mean? I think I'm just gonna work on the expression. I've got an hour. No, I'll work on the other half. I feel like I'll be cheating if I don't. So, let's work on the other half of this. So, we've got this very long thing right here. So this one has wit. The only thing that I mostly eat is a salad with some coffee, so I'm good. Well, at least you're getting your nutrients. Hey, Fawn. Welcome back. Um, I mean, if you're getting your nutrients, then I'm okay. I'm not an advocate of starvation in any way. But I don't think five days is going to cause you to be starved. And salads are pretty nutritious. Just making sure. Oh. Um, I don't... Here's what you missed, Fun. I fixed the shoes. That's basically all you missed. All right, so I kind of want to be just a little bit lazy, so let's go in here and we're going to do, where's the hair? Hair, hair, there we go. So we're going to do hair. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the wave. And this is one of my favorite effects. Um, the reason being, it's hyper versatile. And I'm just gonna, gonna go wave warp on the hair. And I just want the effect of it. For skin, I just want position and so P and R, since position and rotation are the same for here, we're just going to do that. The effects controls are here. And now that I've clicked on that, let's see. Tosin. Okay, so font says photosynthesis. I was gonna ask about the shoes. Yeah, I, I fixed the shoes. I knew they looked weird. 
Um, Exotic Butter says, I look something up, I can exploit this challenge. What is the exploit you have found? So... Okay. So, now that I put the weight distort on this, you can see... That actually looks kind of funny. I wanted to do a wavy distort. So I'm going I'm gonna do the actual wave distort that I had planned, but I really do like this. It kind of makes it look like the hair is there. I'm gonna do the actual one I had planned and then I'll see which one I like better. Um I can eat baked potatoes due to the carbs in it. Um, carbs are a good source of energy. Just be careful that you're not gaining too much weight. Because your body can be really, really... How do I put it? The height... Let's put this at zero. There we go. So let's reset this, put this at zero. And... So I put the height way too up and this is what I got. <laughs> so those are the playing. Potato salad is a thing. That is true. That is very true. Um, I'm a skinny boy, so <laughs> you're a skinny boy. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to up the width. So that I'm only getting about two waves in there. And it's the highest position. So what I'm going to put is this, this, and this. I'm going to just put that all down there. Move that over here. Copy paste. Yee. Yeah. Alright, so what I'm gonna do at this first position right here is I'm gonna reset it. So this is what it looks like. And I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna put this at zero and let's see how that looks first play oh whoops I want the wave height to be zero whoops Zero, I said zero. Good. No, you can still be 30 with. And what I'm doing is, <laughs> look at that jiggliness. So wiggly. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> yes. He's a wiggly boy. Okay, so I'm gonna... You still need to be zero. And let's see. So I'm actually going to put all of this at zero. Okay, the wave width has to stay at one, so. And I'm just going to pull you all the way out there, just so I can get a good read on that. And now I'm thinking I might want to switch these. Delete. That's his... <laughs> First, let's name him Boxhead. Um, 
we can name him, but I have a question for you, okay? And hold on, don't ans- I'm not gonna ask it yet. If we name this one Boxhead, what do we name? Oh, these guys. So if we name that one Boxhead, what do we name everybody else? Like... (laughs) If I name him Cuphead, I'm gonna have some copyright issues. Safe, Safi, Safibrina, Lacus, Boxhead, Cuphead, um, okay. So, all right, let's, let's take a bit of a break. I will put that there. I'm just going to test to see how this looks. I actually got the pun Jackhead, um, Safarbrina. Okay. <laughs> you guys are having fun. I, feel free to name them. I am really bad with names. My names are very cliched, so feel free to go and name them. I would appreciate it, because if it were up to me, they'd all be um, Tipo, Shocked Mail, and others. So, go right ahead, name them. Okay, so that's what that's looking like. Rub. Guys, I can't roll my R's. Stop doing this to me. Roberto. And Tipos. <laughs> okay. All right, so now that you guys have come up with names and I'm gonna drag this out. This image contains every lock. Let me just make sure you guys are seeing it clearly. There we go. This image contains every lock. We're gonna play a game. So, who So, who is who? So, who is Safrabrina? Who is Jackhead? Who is Roberto? And if you want to laugh in Spanish, you're looking at ha ha ha. J A J A J J A. So going from my left to right, what's the name of this one with the question mark? I'll win. Um, this one right here is the one we're currently working on. And there's only three girls in this picture. If a lock has eyelashes, then uh, it's a girl. So you've got one, two, three. So you're going to need three girl names and everybody else is male. So I'll wait for you guys to finish that up. While you're finishing that up, I'm going to drop the window where's the project there we go i'm gonna drop our little t post mail in and in order to drop him into our composition the first thing i'm gonna do is turn off that go here and i'm just gonna drop him somewhere 
I'm not quite sure where he ended up. But there he is. So we just dropped him into our composition. And the first one should be Lucky, God of Confusion. Guys, my my I only know hiragana and katakana. So please don't drop any kanji into <laughs> into here. Um give me a second. Okay. I can get the last part, which is like wine. But what is the um what's the first one? What is that kanji for exotic? I kinda wanna call you butter. Yes. I'm gonna call you butter. Butter, what is that first kanji? What it The left one's name should be something wine, so I'm not quite sure. Maybe not the god part. Okay, so Lucky of Confusion is what you're aiming for. Alright, so... So we've got luck. Whoops. So we've got luck of confusion, lucky of confusion. Um, I'm not sure what Orla's a jumping guy is. So you're gonna have to tell me. And. Whenever I get my Japanese dictionary, I'll look that one up. Oh, no, wait, I can ask Mr. Google. So give me a second, I'll just write that into Google Translate. Fonton has suggested wiggly bits for our second lock. Oh, Shiro. Is that what it looks like? Okay, so... Butters has suggested white wine for the left one. Wine glass. But that's not... Okay, which one are you? Su that's not wine glass, though, butters. That's um. So if you write in katakana, it's the equivalent of writing in with the English syllables. So it's it's white wine. Are you suggesting wine glass for one of them? And uh, what? Okay, that one is. Okay, so you want our jumper to be wine glass. Okay, I'm understanding you now. You want our white wine glass. And uh, which one do you want to be white wine? You're not stupid. Everybody makes mistakes. The Japanese have three alphabets. Trust me, you're not stupid for <laughs> making a mistake. Um... 
So we've got wine glass and wiggly bits as suggestions for our jumper. And then we have uh, with the left one should be wine glass. I'm just reading down. Lucky God of Confusion is the suggestion for the first one. Um, do you guys have any suggestions for these two that are running? So I'm just going to pause and let you guys know that this one and this one are the same. What you have in the background right here is a... How do I put this? A picture that I'm just using as a placeholder until I put the environment in. Trash can is white wine. Oh, <laughs> you're naming the trash can. Um, okay. Okay, so the trash can has a name. It's white wine. Um, you guys, is it wiggly bits or is it wine glass? You guys decide. All right, so that's that one. I'm going to actually go back to the shy so I can see my keyframes. And we're just going to make that smaller just so I can work with it. Jamie is the front one and the other one is iPhone 10. Guys. <laughs> Okay, iPhone 10, I'm not quite sure. So tell you what, I'm gonna pick one name from you, then one name from Fun, then one name from you, then one name from Fun. So we're gonna end up with some interesting names for the both of them. Okay, so we've gotten here. And there. And let's go with the eyes now, because I think the eyes. Okay, yes, I did do them on separate layers. Yay! I'm just going to test this. So do 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 here. Let's go back. And I'm going to move you down. The front runner is traumatized by Hill. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my god. Um I if the front runner is gonna be me, then it's gonna have to be um Oh, I just looked at the It's gonna need glasses, cause otherwise there's no way it's running. 
and uh, well done. Okay, so I have put this runner behind the this jumper character behind, and I'm just gonna hit itch there. Let's go V. And so the middle ground kind of contains all the people, so I need to put it above the middle ground for it to actually work. So, and here is where I'm gonna put our character's expression. So, if I move that all the way out, I'm pretty sure that should work. All I can think of right now is Keanu Reeves. I have not heard that pun before, so good luck. Um, Tony was saying that there's a bunch of keys trying to break into lockdown, so I'm wondering if Keanu is one of the invaders of the town. And maybe not one of the people on the screen. But it's always good to check. Okay, so I'm just gonna go with scale on these two. Um, position, scale, and rotation. Why you bully me? Um... Huh? Who's bullying you? Would be pretty funny, an invader. Yes, we can have a little Keanu key face running around. Okay, so... Do, 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 do. Here. Here. And that puts, whoa, is that where it is? It's actually very far along the... Here. And that puts that way out here, so... The shocked expression on the eyes is going far, 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 far. I've got about half an hour left on this, so I'm going to move this over here and I'm going to hit scale on this one and position. I don't actually think I'm going to need rotation for either of these. I think I just selected that one by force of... James Charles is bullying me. Who is... James Charles. Is this a meme? Okay. Okay, I just ran a quick Google search on that. James Charles is a makeup artist, internet personality, and the first cover girl ambassador who was male. So yes, I'm assuming this is a meme. I don't I don't know. I, I'm lost. I I'm not internet literate. Just putting that out there. I am really not internet literate. At all. Uh, 
I'm, I'm not your people. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're talking about, and I'm confused. Okay, so we've got hair, and from hair, so I'm actually just gonna go come explain to us what you mean. So Okay. <laughs> Just roll with it? Okay. Um, going back to the glass thing, I have a question that makes me curious about people trying out glasses for the first time. Okay, Fon, shoot. What's your question? Butter says, Fontan, roll with it. Monaris, roll with it. Um... Okay, all right, I'll just roll with the punches if you say so. So I'm just gonna move that over there. I'm gonna take this, control cut, control paste, control paste. I don't wanna get into, If you don't know what a basic meme is, we're at in the end game now. Um, okay, when it comes to memes, and I'm going to sound very basic, I've got friends for that. I spend, like, most of my life not knowing a thing about what's going on with memes. I literally have friends who are in charge of making sure that... Um, I know what's going on on the internet. I actually don't know. I actually don't know what's going on otherwise. So what I'm doing right now is making sure that the eyes line up. When they first come on screen. Okay, so... Oh! Okay, so my eyesight is... Mm, how do I put this? It's not that I'm... I was kind of exaggerating when I said I'm blind. My glasses are mostly for... My glasses are mostly for... Um, how do I put this? Yeah. They're mostly for um, blocking the blue light from my computer. Yeah, if reading were like only done on computers. But yeah, my eyesight is mostly for, my glasses are mostly for blocking things on computer. But I have heard people say that they thought trees were just like green puffballs. Um, the concept of a leaf wasn't um, there for a lot of people I know. So I do know what you're um, saying. For me, when I first put my glasses on, and I'll never forget this, the ground looked so much closer than it usually does. Um, 
I'm jealous. You have 2020 eyesight. My eyesight isn't bad per se, it's just like because I use the computer so much for my job and for school and for everything, it's I get migraines, headaches. Yeah, I get some really, really terrible headaches that um I'm going to turn off the middle ground. And see. Yeah. No, the ground looked like it came two feet closer to me the first time I put my glasses on. Because the thing with reading glasses is they're basically magnifying glass glasses you put in front of your face without that whole Coca-Cola bottle look. So the ground, the trees, the wall, everything looked three times closer than it usually does. So I had trouble estimating distance. And walking felt really, really weird because my brain and my eyes were telling me two different things. You can hold it without using your hands or your arms. What is it? Your breath? Did I get it right? Is it your breath? I have another answer if breath is wrong, but breath is kind of like the... Okay. <laughs> okay, I got it right. Alright, so we got that right. Now that I've started working on the eyes, um... Yes. I I consider myself very lucky for getting that. I'm usually not that good at riddles. Um I had my mom to help me. However, I did run into stuff. Jimmy's mother has three children. The first was called April, the second was called May. What was the name of the third? Jimmy, you told me. Um Jimmy, April, and me. Did you have someone help you during that? I ran into a wall the first time I put my glasses on. I thought the wall was, um... I thought the wall was a lot further than it actually was because I thought it was closer, so I overestimated how far the wall was supposed to be and ran into the wall, the face first, just like. And my doctor laughed at me. And the reason he could do it was because he's a family doctor. So he's treated my grandmother, me, my mom, my cousins, like. It's just like... Okay. Yeah, it was really, really... Um... It's been around for millions of years, but it's never more than a month old. What is it? Um, something that is new every single month, but is also simultaneously old. Oh, I know. The moon. It's the moon. Quite the hit, then. Yes, it hurt. It hurt a lot.
it hurt a whole lot. It was like, we get a new moon every month. Um, just um, giving you a hint, my, my username, Monaris, translates to Moonrise, so that I know a lot of moon trivia. So let's see. All right, so now that I've got the expression going, I kind of realized that, yeah, I need to finish the other half of this jump. Um, okay. Feed me and I will live, but drink me and I will die. Um, that one is hard. That is hard. I, I really don't know what that one is. I'm I'm thinking about it. Give me give me a second. Let me go here. So I'm gonna hide the eyes. And I've only got a couple minutes left. If I don't get it by 955, just tell me. Um Let's get rid of these arms. The hair um, is not needed right now. <laughs> no, I'm actually not Googling the answer. I really wish I would, but um, you guys would be able to tell if I were. <laughs> it's kind of um, the downside of live streaming. <laughs> No, but I seriously don't know. Um, okay, I give up. What is it? Okay. Um, a fire. Oh, oh, that's cool. I didn't think of that that way. Yeah, if you feed flames, but if you pour water on them, they die. I didn't think about that. That's a good riddle. That is a very good riddle. Um. <laughs> Vaughn said, um, I mean, gasoline is a drink. Um, if you drink gasoline, I'm pretty sure we'll die too. Um, in this case, Vaughn, I'm going to say you the weird one. Just a little, just a little bit, <laughs> just a teeny tiny bit. <laughs> yeah, in this case, I'm gonna say you the weird one. But then again, Twenty One Pilots has a song that's about drinking chlorine, so you might not be that weird. Speaking of which, what's you? What kind of music do you guys listen to? I kind of go through like periods of time. Fun, I'm weird too. <laughs> we we all know that. I'm a live streamer that doesn't have the slightest clue um what most memes are about. So, let's
Whew. Okay, now I'm gonna work on the legs, so... Let's go. That's the whole position. So, I'm gonna put it at a little bit lower than 259. So... There we go. Oh wow, no, he looks extra tiny. Beautiful. Um, three doctors said that Billy was their brother. Billy said he had no brothers. Who was lying? Um, nobody's lying. The doctors are girls. Um, I have a bunch of different styles of music. I just listen to whatever fits my mood at the time. Um, I kind of do the same thing. I listen to a lot of, um, J-pop, but there are times when I listen to American Indie music or Icelandic music. Icelandic. Icelandic. Which one of those words is correct? <laughs> but there's this dang it um yeah uh, okay so okay I'm actually gonna turn on the white there we go now I can see what I'm doing <laughs> cause it couldn't just now Oh no, literature class classes. Um, I don't know which one's right. Butter says Doki Doki. Why is your heart beating so fast? <laughs> I'm done with you all. You're I'm confused. What is up with you two? Mm. I actually want to put this one just a little bit behind because landing on both feet is actually quite hard. So... Do you want to hang around? Hang around where? You might not get this job. Oh. Where exactly are you hanging around? Is this one of those pun jokes? Because Fontan tried to do one of those on me last stream with the um, up dog, the up dog one. Okay, so I'm gonna go... Oh, so I'm right. It is, it is one of those things that I'm not, I'm just not gonna get. Um, I'm just going to leave you guys to it. It seems like you know what each other is talking about. Um, where is the shoe and the sock? Alright, so it's 9.57 and I kind of have to leave in three minutes. Do, 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 do. 
So I think we've gotten a good way through the animation today. We've gotten half of the jump done and the expressions. We've gotten some of the hair done and we've managed to move the eyes. So we're ending the stream right now, guys. Thank you for coming. Yeah. I'm always punctual, but oh, right. You guys weren't here at the beginning. So um, I had an allergic reaction earlier today and I'm not feeling the best. So I was planning to end the stream early, but I was having fun talking with you guys. So I decided to go to the regular ending time, but I am actually still quite tired from that earlier today. So I am going to go and sleep. So you guys can, you guys can message me. I'll probably be in the discord for a bit, but Streaming actually does take a lot out of me. It's a lot of brain power. And I kind of don't want to do anything that's going to aggravate my, myself. But guys, thank you for stopping by. If you... <laughs> yeah. If you want to talk to me, I am always on the flop discord. Um, I may not respond immediately, but my computer never turns off, so you'll always see me on busy. You can also find me in uh, our Discord, which is the Monterey's Art Community. We accept all forms of arts, which is music, writing, uh, drawing, animation, And beatboxing. I won't tell you who the beatboxer is because I wasn't told. I was told that um, that's a highly personal. But if you guess, I am allowed to tell you. So if you can guess who the beatboxer is. I will tell you. So feel free to stop by. <laughs> Fon says now. Hold on. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to drop that on you at the end of the stream and not tell you anything. <laughs> yes, um, there's a beatboxer in our art community. Can you guess who? <laughs> I'm just going to drop that on you <laughs> and uh, figure it out. <laughs> that would be hilarious. A four inch beatboxing bunny. Maybe I can convince Bun Bun to beatbox. Maybe. <laughs> Fonz head cannon. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's Pac, maybe it's not. Um, I'll let you guys know <laughs> who the beatboxer is. I think you guys are going to have a hard time guessing. <laughs> but um, next week... I will probably show you the ending of this animation or we will complete this animation. The project that I will be doing immediately after this one is a, storybo a storyboard for the Loud House. So you guys can look forward to that. Hmm, am I the beatboxer? Hmm. <laughs> That's a good guess. Maybe it's me. Haha. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's me for today. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for all the support. I really appreciate it. And... Yeah. Yeah, maybe it is me. You never know. You never know who it might be. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> Cherry pie does. Wow, you guys are going really out there. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I Tony, I catch you. Tony's trying to convert me to the dark side. <laughs> Anyway, guys, thank you for stopping by. Hold on. I've got hearts for you all. Hearts. I've been saving these these hearts. Where are they? Where is it? Guys, I lost all my hearts. Where'd they go? Oh, there it is. I am looking for... There we are. Again, thank you. This is the second time I'm seeing some of you guys today. I saw most of you earlier on Ray's stream. Always appreciate the support. Bye bye. I'm gonna go eat, maybe sleep, and uh, we'll see. And that's me for today. <laughs>